My name is Rachel Lowe and I'm the Managing Director of RTL Games Limited. I'm pitching for 75,000 and this is my first product, Destination London, being launched this year at Hamleys of London. The Portsmouth edition is being launched at Cascade Shopping Centre in Portsmouth. Now, I came up with the idea for this game whilst working as a taxi driver in Portsmouth to pay my way through my university law degree at the University of Portsmouth. I then spent several months researching the industry and I found a huge gap in the market. Tourism. 30 million tourists go through London every year and it doubles up as a perfect souvenir of the city. The players' pieces are miniature London taxis. The destinations on the board are all famous tourist attractions and the idea of the game is that you have to earn as much money in a shift as possible. Further investment will mean that I can get future additions to market which include Destination New York, Destination Paris, in fact any capital city of any country. It really is a fantastic investment opportunity. Thank you for listening. Rachel is looking for £75,000 in exchange for a 30% stake in her company. With her finished sample and her promise of a launch at Hamley's toy store, she seems confident. But will she persuade the dragons to part with their money? Can I have a look at the board? Of course, yeah. How do you play it? Um, you all start at the rank. And the idea of the game is you have to get to as many destinations as you can. Can I go in any direction I want once I've thrown the dice? Yeah, you can. So, if I got a three and I got this traffic light, I've done it that means one. that you pick up a traffic light card and then you follow the instructions on the card. That's the kind of thing it'll be. You have been caught doing 30 miles per hour, pay a £60 fine, and you will receive three points on your licence. So, in this game, then, if I get 12 points, do I lose my licence? You do, and you have to buy it, right. buy it back for a fee. And it's an enjoyable yes, game? Yes, it's good fun. And it, it does work, it's been tried many times. Rachel's working hard to interest the dragons in her board game, but a good product is only part of the package. Doug Richard wants to know about her marketing campaign, and in particular, her launch at the best-known toy store in Britain. Tell me about your Hamleys relationship. What exactly have you agreed with Hamleys? Hamleys are going to launch this product. I mean, they're the most established uh, toy I, store. I, you can assume I know who Hamleys is. OK. They're going to launch this product. And what does that mean? To... I mean, they could launch the product by, for example, putting a table in the front of the store and stacking it high. That's a launch. A high-profile launch. I'll have some celebrities there with, uh, you know, celebrities that have got children. You're going to pay the celebrities or um, organise the celebrities to come to Hamlet's? No, organise the celebrities to come to Hamlet's. Right. What are Hamlet's actually doing off their own bike with their own money in their own time? Well, all they will do is they will organise the press um, and the media to be there. Um, what I will do is I will make sure that I've got, um, you know, enough promotional material outside. What you mean is that Hamlet's will tell the press there's going to be a launch mm -hmm. and the press will decide whether or not to turn up. And even if they do turn up, then the newspaper will decide whether or not they want to print it. So you might get nothing out of it. Press-wise? Press-wise. Possibly. It's not going well. Rachel was pinning her hopes on her Hamley's launch, but the Dragons are sceptical. They aren't convinced that a celebrity-endorsed board game will guarantee her any publicity at all. Rachel Elnor needs convincing on other matters. Rachel, how many units of Monopoly are sold a year? 700,000. Across the world or in...? In, in um, the UK alone. Isn't that a pretty big competitor? If I was looking for a board game which is a souvenir of London, aren't you up against a massive competitor there because it's the biggest...? Well, you know, Monopoly is the most established board game, but what I've got to do is get a distributor that will give me the same presence within the marketplace that Monopoly has. This will sell. Any Distributors game don't give you market presence, and you have to have a sales force to persuade the retailer to tell the distributor to send it. A distributor is a place where stuff is held. So you, you misunderstand the role of the distributor in the marketplace. They don't push products into market. They don't have the net profits to do it. But Rachel. Hasbro is the market's leading distributor. And yeah. if they have a product that is in Woolworths, then they advertise it, and that is why they're the market's leading distributor. Do you know how many new games are introduced every year? How many new games? In yes, board games. In the UK market, um, I think there's about 20 each year being introduced. And what percentage of them last more than a year? I don't know that. OK. Rachel's struggling to answer the questions, and under the scrutiny of the dragons, she's starting to look unprepared. She desperately needs £75,000 of investment. Simon Woodruff has made his decision. Rachel, um, I think it's brilliant what you're doing, and it may do very well. But I don't think it's an investment. 
because I don't think you're far enough on. It's very hard for a third party investor to actually make an investment in somebody who's not actually got that business experience. So I think you're going to do well with it, but it's not an investment yet. Okay. Rachel has lost the interest of Simon Woodruff, who's not prepared to gamble on her lack of experience. He's the first dragon out, but Peter Jones has similar concerns. Rachel? Hello there. Um, from my perspective, I think that the gaming market, we all know, is very competitive. And I think what you're trying to do, I think, is very inventive. But the level of experience that you've got in running a business is obviously of a major concern. I don't actually want to invest in somebody that actually is going to go through that learning experience because there's going to be too many and too many pitfalls. Okay. So on that basis, I'm not going to invest in the business. Rachel has also lost the confidence of Peter Jones. So Rachel Elnor, Doug Richard and Duncan Bannatyne are the only dragons left. Although Doug Richard has already spotted some major flaws in Rachel's business, he hasn't finished with her yet. So what's your fiscal year? When does your year start as a company? You are a company, right? I'm a company, yes. Yeah. You're a limited company. Yeah, so I've been set up limited since November. What level of revenue are you committing to create in the first year? In the first year? Yes, the one that okay. starts at the at beginning of December this year and ends the end of November next year. Um, I would say minimum 30,000 units. Can we use um, pounds sterling instead of units for the purpose of discussion? How much money do you intend to create? How much revenue do you intend to take in um, in the first year? In the first year, 200,000. Okay. Will you make any money on that or will you lose money on that? Make money. So what is your estimated profit at the end of the first year? Loosely speaking, I'm just trying to get a feel for it. Um, Doug Richard is the last person any entrepreneur would want to face if they didn't know their figures, and Rachel seems to be out of her depth. If she can't give convincing answers, she's going to lose him. The pressure is on. If 30,000 units are sold within one year, the net profit on that is 190,000. No, the gross profit on it might be 190,000, but the net profit certainly is not. Is well, I was working me? out the difference between £8.50 and the. Um, oh, so you were working out the gross 70. profit? Okay, well, I'm probably okay. misunderstood. I'm interested in your net profit. I'm interested in whether the company, after running its overheads and your salary and everything else, ends up with a profit at the end of the first year. And the answer is. Okay, um, the estimated profit on that is approximately 180,000 for the first year. Okay. You've just lost me completely, my interest. We can't even have a basic business discussion. It is entirely impossible for you to have a 190,000 pound net profit on 255,000 pounds of sales after we've just gone through a discussion that your costs are greater than that. To have all of these figures in my head. It is not a matter of precision of numbers. You know, I don't care if you're even close, but you don't have in your head a sense of it. What annoys me is that you have managed to put all this effort and time into something and yet stand here in front of me and be a wasted opportunity. I'm annoyed for you, I'm annoyed at you. Um, maybe this is gonna be the best learning experience of your life and maybe you will succeed, but I'm out. Okay. Rachel has been torn apart by Doug Richard and her confidence is vanishing fast. She still needs to raise the full 75,000 pounds she came for, but just two dragons remain, Duncan Bannatyne and Rachel Elnor. Her chances of winning them over look slim. I'm, I'm amazed, actually, that you could not know the difference between gross profit and net profit. No, and I do know the difference. I just got confused with the question because I didn't have my figures in front of me, that's right. all. Not from a sheet of paper. You should learn it. Um, I think you probably regret not having done that today, but that's a learning curve. So I hope you've learned something and you've learned enough to continue. So I'm out as well. Thank you. Duncan Bannatyne has also been put off by Rachel's shaky grasp of the figures. With him out, the only dragon left is Rachel Elnor. It doesn't seem like you've prepared very well to come in front of us today. You don't know the difference between gross profit and net profit. You haven't got the figures in your head. Quite apart from the fact of whether it will sell or not, and I think there's big question marks over that. It will sell because it's not only got the tourism market, it's got the mainstream market. Rachel, I'm I do feel for you because you've come, you've come into this environment. You remind me of a bit like a sort of lamb to the slaughter in some ways. I think your presentation was a bit confused. I don't get the sense that you've just got that, that kind of business snappiness. Um, it really isn't an investment for me. I, I'm afraid I wouldn't back you. 
It's the end of the road for Rachel. She's leaving the dragon's den with nothing. When it came down to it, it was Rachel's pitch and not her board game that cost her the investment. She just seemed too nice and just be eaten alive in business. She was a crappy investment. Rachel, you must have been taken aback by the sort of negative reaction you got. I was, because I mean, I've done lots of business presentations and I've always coped with it, but accounting isn't my strong point. I can't have figures in my head. It's something that I do need on paper. But there's many successful business people um, that don't necessarily do the figures, but, you know, they'll have someone else. And when I'm successful, I'll have someone else doing it for me. 